And now I want to tackle the animals next and start to bring them to life. So I've switched to a half inch flat brush. This one's a little bit frayed as well. So I'm hoping that uh, I can you know, get some nice edges going. Um, got my burnt umber. Let's grab some of the ultramarine blue and a little bit more of that. And then we'll see if we can um, begin to bring this one in the background to life. So I'm going to begin by painting over almost everything that I've done in terms of the pure burnt umber. So the idea there is I hope that when this fairly thin coat that I'm putting down now uh, dries, some of the underlying shadow work that I've put down already will still show through. And as I do this, I can kind of refine the line of the back of the foreground animal. I've refined it, a, refined it a little too much there, though. Um, and as I go in towards the, the white stripe, with a flick of the brush, I can add to the frayed nature of the edge of that white stripe. OK, now you can see I've got a little bit of the watercolour marker from my initial drawing still showing. That's an effect that I don't mind personally. Um, I quite like some of the initial work of the painting to show through in the finished product. And by applying the paint fairly thinly, you know, because I've got a little bit of translucency, you know, some of the oranginess of the of the burnt umber is going to show through. Some of the areas of unpainted, previously unpainted paper, that's going to show through a little bit. So it's almost like painting with watercolour when you use acrylic in a thin way, or, or at least there are some similarities. So you see, again, I've got the original drawing showing through there. Again, I'm fairly happy to, to have that as is. So the next thing I'm going to do then, I may as well carry on working on, on this uh, chap in the background, uh, is I'm going to grab some of the ultramarine blue. I, di I didn't wash my brush out, so there is a little bit of the burnt umber in there as well still. And we'll grab a touch of white. And we can use this as the beginnings of a highlight colour. Now, when you're painting black fur um, or hair, you want to keep your highlights very subdued. Much better to keep them too dark, as I have here by accident. 